What happens to our dead bodies? Have you ever heard the Monty Python song, Always Look at the Bright Side of Life? There's a great line that goes, Always look at the bright side of death. The song may have been a joke, but it also raises the point that death isn't as scary as many people think it is. So, you're dead. Now what? It's also true that none of us are getting out of this life alive. After all, the dead can't eat pizza. As one of our fathers used to say, you know why graveyards are so full? People are just dying to get in. The thing is, most of us fear death because we don't understand it. We just tend to think of it as the end. One thing, this isn't the case for our bodies. What would you say is the first thing that happens to our bodies when we die? We'll give you a second. Give up? We poop and pee ourselves. Thank goodness we won't be alive to experience that. It's true, too. See, as soon as we die, all the muscles that hold that stuff in totally relax because our brains are no longer sending signals saying, um, don't let that out. This lack of muscle control also may cause our jaw to fall open. Our bodies essentially become totally limp for about an hour. During this first hour of death, pupils will dilate and our bodies will become pale and cold because blood has stopped flowing. Think of it like a machine shutting down. However, all of that is really just the start. Like, quote the mummy, death is only the beginning. And to be clear, we mean the 1999 Brendan Fraser version of that movie, aka the good mummy movie, not the DOA one that Tom Cruise made. But I digress. Where were we? Oh, right. So from hours two to six, the cells in our muscles stiffen and rigor mortis sets in. You might think it takes energy to flex a muscle, but in reality, muscles are like rubber bands. On a molecular level, when we are alive, energy is used to stretch them out and set them on a trigger, just like how you can stretch a rubber band to load a toy rubber band gun. When we go to flex that muscle, our body just pulls the trigger by firing the nerve attached to that muscle. Voila! The muscle flexes. To use this analogy, the rubber bands in a dead body don't have any energy to stretch back out, so the body stiffens up into rigor mortis. Interestingly, it doesn't happen all at once. Rigor mortis typically starts in eyelids, jaws, and neck and moves on from there. After about 12 hours, our bodies are good and truly stiff. But it doesn't stop there. As our cells change and our bodies decompose, our bodies become dehydrated, which causes the skin to shrink and pull back. This is a great example of how death is misunderstood. For a long time, people have speculated that our hair and nails grow when we die. But in fact, our nails just appear longer because there's less skin to cover them up. Perspective is everything in life and death. Putting the fun in funeral homes. Another question for you. What happens in many cultures following a person's death? A funeral, of course. Also known as a party where the guest of honor is just dying to get to, even if they typically arrive late. Thank you. There's no need for applause, really. Though we wouldn't say no to a standing ovation. Anywho, the answer is funerals. For people who don't get cremated, their bodies go through a whole process to get ready for their big day. For starters, a mortician begins the process of embalming by injecting the body with formaldehyde. We've all seen that mentioned before on TV or in movies, right? Have you ever wondered why they do it? Well, of course we're going to tell you, but shockingly, a large part of the reason is for you. See, the embalming process serves several purposes, one of which is to preserve the body so it looks good for funerals. Otherwise, the body would decompose to a state where no one would want to see it. On the more practical side, though, the embalming process cleans bacteria that may be in the body, thus preventing any diseases from spreading. Of course, in many cultures or situations, people don't want to view the body, so it's quickly buried. In other cases, the body needs to stay whole for forensic examination, so it's chilled or frozen. An interesting bonus note about embalming. Did you know that the process harms the morticians? It's true. See, the fluid used to embalm a person is really bad when breathed in. So much so that embalmers are at a higher risk for nasopharyngeal cancer, myeloid leukemia, and other forms of cancer. In fact, many suffer from conditions such as sinus issues and rashes, including one called embalmer's eczema, and it can cause feelings of dizziness. But, you know, it's worth it to make our bodies look their best on our big day. So raise a glass to the funeral directors out there who are sacrificing their health to look after us in death. Speaking of looking our best after death, it takes quite a bit of work to leave a good-looking corpse. In most cases, the funeral home will brush a body's hair or apply makeup to help them look a degree of natural. However, there is so much more to it than that. 
prevent the mouth from hanging open, which, let's face it, looks creepy. Funeral directors will sometimes use super glue or stitches to seal the mouth shut. Ditto with the eyelids. Some of us don't have to put in that much effort to look good while we're alive. Of course, the goal behind all of this is for our deceased body to leave a somewhat positive, lasting image of the deceased. If a person is having a closed casket funeral or being cremated, none of that is needed. Some deadly facts about death. While we get the human inclination to fear death, it doesn't have to be a scary experience. True, it's easier to say that than to experience it. However, consider this. Most of us fear death because it's the perceived end. Everything we enjoy and experience just stops. And we know that. But go with us here. Will it really end? We mean that, of course, death is final. But a theory suggests that because our brains stop functioning upon death, we don't actually know we died. So while some of us may experience the act of dying, especially if we are ill, we won't actually experience death. Trust us, we know that concept takes a second to wrap your head around. The Greek philosopher Epicurus wrote, Why fear death when we can never perceive it? He wrote that over 2,300 years ago, by the way. So, yes, we're getting advice on death from someone who's been long dead. Kinda spooky. Something else to consider with shuffling loose the mortal coil is that there are some positives to the actual act of death. Don't get us wrong, we're not encouraging anyone to rush toward their final destination. But consider the fact that when someone is extremely ill or is in constant great pain because of an injury or something, death is a release from that pain. It is again an end. Also consider, if people never died, our world would almost certainly face numerous resource shortages. Plus, who wants to live to be 2,000? Anyone in their 40s and up can tell you that getting out of a chair after sitting for a while can be enough of a harrowing experience. Last thoughts. One of life's universal truths is that, for the most part, ignorance is the mother of fear. We tend to fear what we don't understand. At one point, humankind feared the sun after all. And even though people have been dying, literally, since people were a thing, many of us still fear death due to its mysteries. We hope that in the course of this video, you learned enough to dispel some fears you may have. Is there an afterlife? Some believe, some don't. But instead of worrying about dying, focus on truly living. Show some love. Cultivate gratitude as you smash that sub button. We'll see you next time.